these things in black are all still extant, these black lines, and the, the white lines are all extinct. Well, why they have why acanthodia is black? I don't know. <laughs> All right. So uh, jaws. How did they evolve? Just very briefly and schematically. You get your your anatha or your animals without jaws, and then your nathostomes here. Essentially, what's happened is the cartilaginous gill arches or branchial arches, a series of rods and plates, or cartilaginous that support the gill structures and surround the gill openings have been co-opted at the beginning of the front end of the animal into uh, jaws and supporting structures. So here are the jaws, again, homologous as we go backwards. The thing that's interesting about chondrichthys that the placoderms do not have is the presence of teeth. So that's important. The placoderms don't seem to have teeth. There's some recent <coughs> research that suggests some things in placoderms may be homologous or the same as teeth. But typically, placoderms are, do not have teeth, but they have jaw, um, <coughs> the jaw mechanics. Um, I stole a couple of slides from Neil Shubin's lecture on uh, your inner fish. I, I hope you've read that book. But again, just uh, schematically, uh, you know, uh, sort of a anath and head, and then those same blocks, those same uh, cartilaginous precursors, are homologous to different parts of our our skeleton. So the jaws here, would be these arches that are next. And we can see that very clearly embryologically. If we look at a shark and a human uh, in early embryology, the gill arches are, are quite similar. They're the same, one to the next. Uh, and then uh, in a full adult, here's, here's the, uh, the embryo with uh, color-coded for clarity, the different arches and what they become through uh, ontogeny, that is the, the growth of the animal, of the organism, in this case us, um, from, from conception to, to adulthood. <coughs> anyway, just a little bit about jaws before we get on to the, main, the most exciting uh, jawed animal of Devonian. Uh, when, when did this transition occur? It's essentially in the Devonian, uh, probably actually in the Silurian, but really we start to see jawed vertebrates uh, come into their own in the Devonian particularly in the early Devonian. By the mid and late, they're very, very common. Uh, and that's certainly true here in Ohio and neighboring states. Where you go to Devonian rocks, you have a good chance of finding these early jawed vertebrate fossils. The Devonian was the age of fishes, so-called, popularly, because of uh, <coughs> fishes. Uh, remember, fishes is not a natural group. Uh, but there are lots of these uh, torpedo-shaped animals that are, that are inhabiting uh, the seas, everything from Dunkleosteus and its relatives, uh, certain groups of placoderms, other placoderms, lungfish, sharks, uh, other uh, cartilaginous fish, early ray fin fish, uh, many, many things. Next slide. We're going to focus from uh, here on out largely on the placoderms, from which Dunkleosteus is a part. Uh, placodermy means armored skin or plated skin. Dermis, your dermis, your epidermis, right? Your skin. Uh, and here's some good examples of uh, antiarchs, uh, kind of placoderm. There are renanids, there are gemindinids, all sorts of uh, strange things. These early jawed vertebrates. Uh, many of them predators, perhaps. Uh, probably many of them not predators. Uh, maybe sort of burrowing in the mud and, and getting organic ooze that way and such. Um, next. And then our favorites, <coughs> I hope, by the time the talk is over, uh, the arthrodires. Dunkleosteus is an arthrodire, and it means jointed neck. And you sort of see here uh, that joint, and it's also be present here and here. Um, these are animals that not only allow the jaw to open. If you, if you open your jaw, it's really just your, your lower jaw is going. If you, try, if you hold or have somebody hold your jaw closed, you can't lift your, your head <laughs> to open your mouth. Your jaw goes down. But arthrodires, these fish could open their lower jaw up and crank the top of their head up as well. So great big gape for, uh, for a large bite. 
catching big animals. If we look at the Devonian in the, uh, the geologic column or, or time scale, um, this is a diagram that shows when things appear more or less and when they go extinct if they do. Jawless fishes we know are still with us, certain groups of them, the lamprey and the hagfish, as I mentioned. Um, today, uh, sharks have done pretty well, more or less the same uh, since the Devonian. It's the ray fin fish and the tetrapods, of which we are part, and have really expanded, diversified in the different kinds that exist and, and radiated in numbers as well, and are quite abundant. Uh, lobe fin fish, there are just a few examples today. <clears throat> Placoderms, largely just restricted to the Devonian, and that's a little bit of a mystery. Um, they get going perhaps in the Silurian, as I said, uh, really take off in the Devonian and go extinct at the end Devonian. And I'm not sure that there is really good explanation for, for why that group should have, have gone out uh, and then seemingly be replaced by the sharks. Sharks are coming into their own, but I don't think it's a matter of competitive exclusion. Uh, Placoderms being outcompeted by the sharks, but I think that's still an open question. So what did the Devonian world look like, and what did Ohio look like? <clears throat> here's the Devonian world, and here, more or less, is Ohio, somewhere in there. So here's North America, the Rheic Ocean, right here. And then uh, epicontinental seaway is what this uh, white is. And we're right in there someplace. So we're in the southern hemisphere, um, subtropical, shallow seas, and uh, lots, of, lots of fish, lots of placoderms, lots of arthrodires swimming those seas. Uh, that's ex this geologic history is expressed in the rock record. If we look at uh, Ohio, we, we can see that band of Devonian rocks runs right runs along Lake Erie here and straight on down uh, through the center of the state, passing right through Columbus. Uh, Cleveland up here someplace, Columbus here someplace. Sadly, we're over these boring Ordovician rocks here. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Kentucky, these Devonian rocks continue on down. And I don't know why they, people don't use the same colors, but the red here is the Devonian. Uh, and if we look at sort of uh, subsurface deposits of just the late Devonian, we get a, an impression for the, for the extent of some of those rocks. Um, and that reflects, <coughs> to some extent, the, uh, uh, the paleogeography of the time, with uh, landforms over here uh, shedding sediments, plastic sediments, into the uh, epicontinental Devonian Sea that covered this part of the world. And those rocks, at least the ones that Dunkelosteus is in, uh, look like this. <laughs> they're not, there's not a lot of uh, variety to them. They are classic black shales. Now, there's not all Devonian rocks. We have a lot of limestones and things in the middle Devonian. But since we're talking about Dunkelosteus today, we want to concentrate on the uppermost uh, Devonian and the Ohio shale, and particularly the Cleveland shale member, is famous for these fossils. Its equivalent in Kentucky and Indiana is the new Albany Shale. It's the same, same thing, um, just a, another name. This is an anoxic, organic-rich black shale, a, a black, muddy ooze at the bottom of the seaway uh, without any real um, uh, decomposition going on of dead organisms because of the lack of oxygen at that, that depth. Um, let's go back one, actually. Um, if we're looking at these, uh, these these uh, cliff exposures. You got these black rocks, and you're looking for black fossils that are usually just black, thin plates of bone, at least in, ex in exposure. So they're pretty tough to find. Um, in most places, um, they're a little easier. They're not common, but they're a little, e little easier in, in the Cleveland Shale uh, for, for the reason the next slide shows us. I'm, I'm cheating a little bit. This isn't really the Cleveland Shale. This is the Huron Shale, somewhat farther down. But, but what, it, what is shown here are uh, concretions, inorganic concretions within the rock. Um, and these are big cannonball concretions that form geochemically, often with a, presumably with an uh, organic nucleus, something that's nucleating the, 
the geochemical reaction to form this cemented feature around around the fossil or whatever it happens to be. So some of these big cannibal concretions do have arthrodire plates and things in them. Uh, in the Cleveland shale, um, they're not big round things like this. They're not uh, iron rich as they are here. They're more calcium carbonate and they're more flat. But nevertheless, you see sort of these thin these lenses of of concretion in the Cleveland shale, and frequently they will have fossils inside. So that's that's how they're they're traditionally been found uh, in the Cleveland Lake Erie area. 